Hello and welcome to my uh, video tutorial. Today we are going to uh, model the building Grove at Grand Bay, which is in Miami, Florida, uh, specifically Coconut Grove uh, by Big. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, use utilize the split tree function. We're gonna we're gonna manipulate tree functions, uh, which will really, uh, which and getting to know tree functions is 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 very helpful. It can really open uh, a lot of possibilities. So I have this entire building modeled, uh, but for this lecture, I will focus basically on this structural form and how to get it. Uh, I am going to include the, the grasshopper definition in this video. Uh, I will provide one that just has the structure and then I will have one that is modeling the entire thing. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to uh, show the primary aspect uh, of this. So let us start a new definition. Now, first thing first, I want you to uh, put your units in feet because we will deal in feet. Now, let us look at the building. As you can see, the building is actually 24 stories high. It twists until a certain point, so around the last six stories, it goes straight. And when looking at a plan, uh, the dimension is roughly uh, is 150 by 80. Uh, now we're going to create a floor plate that's going to be uh, 147 by 77 because we are going to account for this distance from the pillar to this edge. And the way that we're going to do it is we want to have a pillar condition where there is six columns this way and four columns this way. And then we will get into how to uh, make a twist and, and how to manipulate these, these uh, how to create these pillars in a logical manner. Okay, so let us start first. Let's make a rectangle. Let us get a slider. Let's make the upper limit 150 and the lower limit, uh, we'll keep it as this. Uh, I like to always use my bifocals command because it helps me organize things better. So I will start with a construct domain. So, like I said, I want it to be 147 by 77 to account for that little space. Uh, so, when I construct my domain, I like to uh, use the expression editor, go negative x divided by 2, expression editor x divided by 2, because I am creating uh, basically a distance from lowest to highest, and I'm going to plug that into my x. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put 77 by 77. So we have the floor plate. Now I want to create 26 stories, so I'm going to go about and use my move command. And then I'm going to use a series command because I'm creating repetition. So the count is 26 stories. I'm going to manipulate my slider. And I want to get a lower, lower range. So I'm going to double click. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put 40. So the count is 26 stories. Uh, each, each floor, I think I want to make it 
let's make it let's make it 14 feet that's roughly what it is so I put that I then I click on the Z component because I'm copying it in the Z direction hit the geometry so I have my 26 stories now the next step is that I need to twist this but like I said we're gonna stop at the last six so we're gonna go about in using the series command again but this time now I want to use the rotate so I go hit rotate remember to click on angle to be in degrees I'm gonna use the series command again now now we have these 26 geometries so I want to feed this list of geometries but I'm gonna go use a list length but as I said we want to subtract the last six geometries so I'm gonna bring a subtraction I will go bring a slider go to 10 so I am 6 so I will feed this as the count. Now we want to have the angle turn uh, progressively. So I want to change this into R because I want I want to have the numbers to be gradually turning uh, progressively. As you can see, I have all these numbers that I can do. So I go with the step. I will. I will go, I will select the first item in the list and I'm going to do an area component because I want the twisting to, to be generated from this point. So I'm going to put this in the plane. I'm going to feed this into the angle and then I'm going to feed this into the geometry. So if I freeze this, we can see we have quite a twist going on. So, so we can let me go make a surface so you can see it better. So it's it's looking pretty 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 much like what it what it should be so we know that we can twist it here now we talked about how we wanted to have six pillars this way and four pillars that way so we can start with the surface surface frames so we will take this let's try to get that relationship or okay so let me see okay Okay, so as we discussed uh, earlier, we're going to offset this edge by three feet because this is where the pillar is. So this is the condition that I want. So I have six points in the U direction and then four, hold on. So and then four in the V. Now, now remember, uh, I have to put three in order to have uh, four points. So let me also uh, manipulate the preview plane size because we can't see uh, the the preview plane. I'm gonna I'm gonna 
Let me go to four. So we can see that this is uh, one, two, three. Okay, so so as you can see uh, in Grasshopper, zero starts is is defines as 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 one. So even though I it says five, I have six points, and even though this says three, it has four points. So now we have set up the 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 model. Uh, so how do we get these pillars to connect? Now let us put a point list to give us some idea what we can do. Let us also, let us just take one item and we can study it a little bit better. Whoops. Let us... Let me just freeze this. Okay, so let me increase the size of this, of the points. So let us first analyze this condition. And the best way to analyze it is to drop one of these param viewers. Okay, so first of all, it is telling us we have six branches and each branch has four items. So one of the things I like to do is I like to simplify my data because I really don't like seeing all these numbers. This, this makes it more clear. So you can see that there is six branches, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. And as I said before, zero equals the first. And each item is basically, each, each branch has basically four items. And you can see it's zero, one, two, three. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to split this list in order to gather the items. So one way to do it is to go split list, split, no, split tree. I'm sorry, split tree. And let's say I want to isolate this, uh, this, this branch with these items. So I can go and use my pram. So I want to isolate this item. So we know that the branch is, hold on, the branch is zero uh, and the, the item is also zero. So I click on this. And then what will happen, let's do a line SDL component. Positive. Line SDL. So, okay. Okay, so basically, I'm just asking for uh, splitting one, G, uh, one branch from the other. So, I have selected the zero branch, which is this. And what you can see is that because I isolated this branch, I can select this component. And then 
And then if I want to select this branch to draw a, another line, I can do, I, this would be branch five. So you see what's happening? Now you're wondering how would I also manipulate this? Well, within, uh, within uh, Grasshopper, you can do a flip matrix. So if I type flip matrix, and if I, let me hide this point list. I'm gonna copy it. When I flip the matrix, what happens is that the tree gets flipped. Now the branches are going this way, and this way, and this way. And now each branch has more items. So you see that this branch has six items, and this branch has six items. So if I freeze this, you can see that the original one had only four, had only uh, five branches and each of the uh, six branches and each of the items have four items. So with this knowledge, what I can do with the flip matrix, and I'm gonna turn this on, is that I'm gonna split the list again. So as you know, this is the branch zero, I'm getting the lines. And then if I put this here, I'm gonna go to branch four. Oh, there is no branch four, it's branch three. Whoops. And then I get this. So basically, we're gonna be manipulating our columns using this method. So let me just erase this because we want to start building our geometry. Oops, let me erase this. Let me. So now one of the things we need to do is we need to understand this geometry. Now, Again, always simplify. So you can see there's a lot of numbers, but it makes sense if you think about it. So we have 24 stories and you'll see two numbers where it says zero, it is referring to this item, this is zero. We say, and then where it says zero, 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 one, what it what it's implying is that this is branch zero, this is branch one, this is branch two, branch three, branch four, branch five, and then obviously it goes from one, and then obviously since there's twenty four stories, it's gonna end at twenty three. Or actually, what did I put? I put. Oh, I put 26 stories. So it's gonna end at 25. So we know now the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna cre create a connection. So let me do a dispatch command so I can show you uh, just what I am talking about. Watch. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that what we want to do is we want to create a condition where this tree connects to this tree, this tree connects to this tree, this tree connects to this tr this tree. So we know that this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. So there's a pattern. So that's gonna be one pattern. The other pattern is that this tree, which is one, will connect to this tree, which is two. 
So one of the things we can do is we can start splitting trees and calling consecutive numbers. So let us click on the split tree. So I want to have the first number, the even numbers connect to the first odd number. So, and I wanna have it continuous and I want it to be the first branch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go zero, comma, two, comma, dot, dot. Uh, this, uh, and then item zero, uh, branch zero, that's the first condition. That is gonna be my mask. And then the next thing is that I will have, I'll make the condition every odd number. I'm going to create a line. So here is the first pillar. I will repeat this because now the next condition is that I want this tree to connect to this tree, this tree connect to this tree. So the condition is that it starts with uh, one, but this one it starts it, no the, the it starts with it starts with one and then this starts with two. So I'm gonna change the condition to two comma four comma dot dot. So you can see that it is creating this condition. Now, I'm obviously wanting to use this one right here, which is basically uh, branch, uh, branch five, because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, what I can do is I can copy this, and in each of these conditions, I'm gonna change the zero to five. And you will see what happens. And you can see the, the pillars got wrapped into this condition. So you can see that it's, it's, it's working. Uh, I will put a pipe command. Uh, I'll put the radius as 2.5. It's a, let me, let me, let me plug in the pipes. so you can better see it, see what's happening. Maybe, maybe I'll make it 1.75. And you can see that it is, because I, I'm, I'm manipulating trees, I can, it always goes. Now, now we discussed how we can flip the matrix to get these pillars to connect. So let me go ahead and do that. Now when I plug in the flip matrix, I get an error message. And the reason why I'm getting an error message is that the flip matrix command cannot handle this many trees. So your the way to go is to use the path mapper. And the path mapper basically allows you to manipulate the data. So I want to flip the matrix, but it, I want to flip all of the matrix of this. So I'm going to double click. I'm going to write it. The script has capital A, semicolon B, parentheses, uh, This is the item, and then I want to flip this, so I write A underscore I 
B. So when I connect this, and then let me, you can so, so you can see that the way that this has been initially conceived is that there are six branches with four items each. Now in this condition, oh, it's empty. I think I. Okay, so okay, so now the matrix got flipped. So you see that there are only four branches and each of them have six items. So you see it's, this is the one, two, three, four. Uh, so so the, ma the matrix has been flipped. So I can, so the first step is to get, uh, basically we need to get this side and this side. So I'm gonna go to my split tree function I want to I want to do the same sort of patterning so I can just let me just copy this let me just copy this I'm going to do my line Okay, you can see the columns are, are building. I can just copy this also. Copy this and then I wanna feed it into here. You can see that these columns have started to be built. I'm gonna So you can see that this is this is being built. Now, now I want to take this branch. So this would be three. So I can just I can just take this. I'm gonna just take these items, copy it. And in this case, we want to change this as the third branch. And this also as the third branch. And then let me... And then let me copy this. We'll change this into three. Let me plug this into this flip matrix condition. Oh, whoops, this got disconnected. Okay, so, so basically, this is the grove at Grand Bay. Uh, you can see the other grasshopper definition because I just completed it as a model, just showing the curtain wall and also, uh, you know, the railing, but this is really the, the essence of getting the, the model is really just understanding uh, trees and branches and how you can really manipulate it better because when you're dealing with trees and branches you can just collect a lot more data as opposed to selecting item by item and it's it's a it's a very effective way so uh, I, I will do more lectures on trees and I hope you enjoyed this